All right, rookies, we're going to jump right into Unit 2, Lesson 5, Maintaining Your Motorcycle and a Pre-Ride Check. Okay, very important. You don't know what to maintain if you don't check your bike, right? We're going to learn all the important stuff here. So rookies like you, all right, hopefully you soon, uh, will learn the importance of maintaining the motorcycle and how to complete a pre-ride checklist before each ride, each ride, each ride, each ride. Each ride. So you'll learn the importance of motorcycle maintenance, and rookies will also learn what to include in the pre ride checklist, and you'll be able to conduct a pre ride checklist. So, what to include, we're going to ask you to make up your own, but once again, every motorcycle has tires and handlebars. You're going to have something a little unique to yours. You might have different stuff. So, as with any other vehicle, proper and consistent maintenance is the key to keeping your motorcycle in top shape so you can enjoy riding it for as long as possible. That's a big thing. Okay, that's one reason to do it. So before any ride, you must make sure that your motorcycle is in good riding condition. That's the other thing. You want to make sure it's in good riding condition. Imagine trying to swerve and you have tires that are like slick. See? So we recommend an inspection after riding as well. So just in case you, you stop at your house, you stop somewhere, you just do a quick little visual, you see a nail in your tire. Might want to take care of that. Your motorcycle's machinery. This includes your engine, transmission, drive shaft, and the parts surrounding these. So boom, look at this. So make sure rust is not inhibiting your motorcycle from functioning properly and that all parts are in their proper place, that nothing is in jeopardy of shaking loose or falling off. You don't want your taillight all of a sudden just kind of dangling. You're like, ah, that's good, and it falls off. Now, once if it's your brake light, now people behind you don't know that you're braking because your brake light's not there, and boom, they hit you because they're not paying attention because they're not smart riders. See? 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 That's where we're getting into it. So your motorcycle's other moving parts. So you don't want to have like your rotors and brakes just smashing each other the whole time and just wearing each other and getting glazed over. You don't want to have your suspension leaking oil and only one of them's really working because that's going to be making it very difficult to swerve, turn, brake, anything like that. Not good. Not good. So structural damage to the motorcycle. So if you hit your frame, you hit your headlight, <laughs> you don't want to do that. So the frame of the motorcycle protects more vulnerable portions and is important to keep intact. So your frame and everything is supposed to keep everything there. So it's kind of like your skeleton. You break a bone, you're not going to be able to walk very well, especially if it's in the leg bone. Break your frame, I w don't ride. <laughs> don't ride. Fix that. Okay, it's not going to take eight weeks like a bone. It's going to take a lot of money or a new bike. So the same applies to your seats as damage to them may mean long-term damage to components underneath. So you usually have your batteries and a bunch of other stuff underneath your seat. So if it's damaged and it doesn't have that water resistant, uh, pleather, leather, whatever it is you're using, vinyl, it could get to the bottom of that. So you don't want it to be damaged. So make sure you take care of your uh, seat too. Plus it's for your back and it's for your butt and it's for this comfort, okay? Tires and wheels. Make sure your tires are filled to their appropriate air pressure. Their tread and sidewalls look good. They're not dented, and their spokes are secure. So these are not spokes. These are like mag wheels, so, you know, depending on what it is. But spokes, usually on Harleys and in cruisers and stuff, make sure they're nice and tight and, and follow your owner's manual for that. But uh, appropriate air pressure, very, very important. You usually ha you have it on the valve stem. So you have it on that triple tree right on the very front where you turn the handlebars. You can look, find it. It's in your owner's manual, and it's going to tell you what pressure to use. You need to match your tires to that pressure. So some people get crazy tires and they want to just inflate it to this. No, you should have gotten the appropriate tires for the motorcycle and the appropriate tires are displayed in your owner's manual what you should be getting. So there's a lot that goes into it. So once again, go to your owner's manual and double check what tire pressure it should be at. Follow that. Okay, not the ones on the side of the on the sidewalls. These are obviously essential for everything your motorcycle does. Hoses carry fluids. That help your motorcycle move, shift gears, help it brake, stop it from overheating, and so much more. If you see a hose worn down or punctured, take it in for maintenance. So hoses carry fluids that help your motorcycle move. So we got fuel hoses. You gotta have to have fuel, right? Stopping it from overheating, antifreeze, or any type of coolant, whatever it is that in your owner's manual says, and so much more. There's so many more things. Blinker fluid, in order for your blinkers to work, right? So anyways, if you see a hose worn down or punctured, take it in for maintenance. <laughs> All right. So fluids, while this will likely be done as you check your hoses, make sure oil and other fluids are at sufficient levels to ride and that nothing is leaking before or after you ride. So after you stop your ride, park it in an area. And then after you get, after you're doing your thing, you get back to it and you see a lot of oil on the ground. Not good. If you see a little bit of oil, okay. Harleys like to leave their, their mark. The thing is, if you keep doing that over days and days and days and days and days, your oil level might be a little bit low. So you want to check your oil level. 
Like I said with the tachometer, odometer in that section, I like to use the trip meter. Remember, it's trip meter B. Trip meter A is for the other fluid, you know, filling up your bike with gasoline or whatever it is that you use. You know, who knows? It might be electric. But the other thing is the oil. So I use trip B and I mark it. This is when I did my oil change. Per my owner's manual, 3,000 miles. So once I get close to that, I see that it's close to 3,000 miles, I do an oil change. And that's the thing. And I, I do it earlier if I see a lot of fluid leaking. If I have an issue, I'll do it earlier. But it gives me an idea of what it is I need to be doing. Stands. Once again, side stands. We talked about that. Check that they're in good condition. It will hold your motorcycle adequately. That's a tough word for me to say. So anyways, uh, you don't want to have it cracked, right? You don't want this thing bent. You don't want this, you don't want to have issues. You want it to be able to snap back. You don't want it stuck. Because if you're trying to take off and it's stuck because there's something in this hinge right here that's damaged, that's not safe. And once if it's starting to fall down a little bit because it's not able to stay retained up in there, that could be an issue too. This is very important. I didn't want to skip it. They must be stable enough that your motorcycle will not get easily knocked over or tumble over on its own, even on softer surfaces. Don't park it on soft surfaces. It's like a lady in high heels stepping on grass. No bueno. You want to stop it on pavement or at least put something down so that it's nice and flat. So make sure they are not only in their proper position, but stable and sturdy. We're talking about mirrors, by the way. So mirrors, all right? You don't want them flopping around. Wind hits it, you start taking off and starts to swing on the hinge. You want it nice and secure, and there's a way to adjust it, way to tighten it down per your owner's manual. So ensure they are clean enough to see through and that there are no imperfections on the mirror causing it to warp. So you don't want to have like oils, hydrocarbons, nothing like that, petrol, all that stuff on their deteriorating stuff. You want it nice and clean. You don't want it foggy. You want to be able to actually use it. Replace any burnt out bulbs as soon as they show signs of going out. Class, are you awake? Making sure you guys are awake. I know we're going over the whole process. We're going over the whole process. Motorcycles are already hard enough for drivers to see and you need all the visibility your lights can give. Consider switching standard bulbs for brighter, longer lasting LED bulbs. And that's actually helpful because when you have that filament in a normal bulb, the vibration sometimes can break that filament before it even goes bad. LEDs don't have that. Uh, they're longer lasting, and they're also very resistant to a lot of those vibrations, okay? They're also brighter, bright, brighter. <laughs> they're brighter. So you might want to upgrade. There might be some things you have to change with your motorcycle because LEDs are a little bit different in terms of uh, the regular bulbs. So once again, check your owner's manual and then check your third party because you might be buying something check with the manufacturer, see how to make it work with your bike. Tire pressure. This is something I do all the freaking time. And anytime I go out on a ride, I check my tire pressure. Always. It's very easy. So a pre-ride may seem like a lot to do before every ride, but with the repetition, it should only take a matter of minutes once you have the routine down. That's with anything. That's with anything. Tying your shoes when you first started was difficult. The bunny ears, man, that was hard. But once you got to it, you're not even looking. You're boom, 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 done. I switched to Velcro but the, and, and my Crocs, so I don't have to deal with that anymore. But the thing is, when you first start something, it takes a while, and then it becomes easy, then it becomes fast. So doing this pre-ride check, checking your tire pressure, and checking the hoses, checking the lights, checking all that stuff, might take a while, might take you five minutes the first time you do it, and then it's going to become a visual, and then it's going to be like a minute long, and it doesn't take that long, okay? You might actually find a problem, and if you find that problem and solve it, imagine dealing with that problem that you had no idea of because you didn't do your pre-ride check in the middle of a turn at an intersection and there was oil leaking and now you got it all over that rear tire and you slip out from underneath you. It's just always better to spend that one to five minutes checking your stuff. So let's do a quick review and I want to read this part. This is very important to me. I'm going to read it to you while you look at me. Okay. So the DFM crew spends a lot of time talking about what others could have done better as a rider. That's what we do here at the DFM crew. Okay. We make sure that we can do better. We also talk about how others make mistakes and how they could do better so we can learn from their mistakes. Very, very important. So I encourage you to keep doing this once you finish this lesson and begin to write on your own. Because I know a lot of you are going to be out there like, well, I learned everything I needed to know. I don't need to do the rest. We're going to talk about helmets and everything in the next unit. We're going to talk about gear in the next unit, but whatever. I already got it, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go out riding. So if you made any questionable decisions, take a look back and ask yourself if it was honestly worth risking your health and your motorcycle. After getting off your motorcycle is the best time to think about what you learned while riding. So just because you went out for a ride and it was a fun time, you go home and don't even think about it, doesn't mean you couldn't have learned something. You go out and ride, something might have happened. 
every time you ride is a practice. You're, it's your habit forming. If you didn't do a pre-ride check this ride and you say, I'll do it next time, before you know it, it's 10 times you went out to a ride and you didn't do it once. Don't practice bad habits. Not doing a pre-ride check is a bad thing to do. If you make it a habit, it's a bad habit. So you're practicing it. And when you practice, you get better at it. And it could be better at anything. You could be better at you know, doing bad stuff. Or you do better at good stuff. Don't practice the wrong thing. Do a pre-ride check.